Hi, my name is Ray Adams, Chartered Financial Planner from CashGalc. Today I'm going to talk about the TVC and how that figure is arrived at. We've already had some feedback from some by users to say I've compared it with an existing system I've been using and the TVC figure is varying ever so slightly. How can that be? It's Cobb's assumptions, it should be identical. Please let me explain. So the first thing you do is you put your benefits in, normally at date of leaving, and they are revalued using historic figures and scheme assumptions to benefits at normal retirement age. And they should be identical regardless of the system you're using. So if you have a slight difference in the revalued benefits, that could be down to an input revaluation error, or it could be a bug on one of the systems. So that's worth addressing. So let's make the assumption that your revalued benefits are identical. What needs to happen then is that those benefits need to be capitalized. And that is using Cobb's assumptions, work out a figure in which on the open market, those benefits could be purchased. Once you've got that figure, that needs to be discounted back to today's date. And that's where there may be a slight variance between us and other systems. Up until this point, Cobbs has been very clear in black and white. But what it actually says now is that you have to use an appropriate gilt yield depending on their term to retirement. That's absolutely fine if the client has 10 years to go to retirement because you use the 10 year gilt rate. It's absolutely fine if you have 15 years to go to retirement to use the 15 year guilt rate. But what do you do if the client has got 12 and a half years to go to retirement? Now one actuary would say, oh that's fine, you use the 10 year guilt rate. And another actuary would say, no, 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 you can be more accurate than that. You use the average of the 10 and 15 and you use that rate. Which actuary is right? They're both right, they're using slightly different assumptions. So what difference would that make? Well, the one assumption may be that you discount back by 1.74 and the other one would you would discount back by 1.68, for example. Not much difference, but obviously compounding that back for 12 and a half years would give a slightly different TVC figure. It should still be within 1 or 2%, but there will be a slight variance. Hopefully I've explained that mathematics in a fairly simple way and um, Good luck to put in those benefits of data leaving in. Thanks very much.